everybody, what a strange time of the year. On one hand, many birds have already started to migrate or are gearing up to migrate. We have a family of brown thrushes visiting our squirrel bus, the sewage feeder, on a daily basis. They're not your regular feeder birds, so this was very exciting to catch one, you know, helping itself to some sewage. So basically, they come to the feeder, they knock a piece off, drop it onto the ground, and then eat it on the ground. Uh, my feeders were empty that day. Actually, grackles don't help because they empty feeders in no time. But I know that in just a couple of weeks, all these migratory birds are going to be gone. And on the other hand, last week, our neighbor Roberta called us because she found a fledgling robin under her maple tree. She was absolutely surprised. So were we because this time of the year, you don't really expect to see any young birds around here. And my kids actually have become so trained when it comes to birds. My son, Kieran, ran back home, grabbed a pair of gloves and moved the fledgling robin to a safer place. So here are a couple of tips for you for this time of the year. Keep an eye out on young birds because the further south you travel in North America, the more chances you'll have of a bird still trying to have another brood. And if you want to see more migratory birds at your bird feeders, put out high energy foods like suet and nuts. Jeremiah Tobin found an American robin lying flat on its stomach with its wings spread out flat as well. Um, that was in his backyard. He has never seen such behavior. So Jeremiah is curious to find out what this bird was up to. Hi, Jeremiah. I must admit it's not every day that you witness an American robin lying on the ground flat on its stomach with the wings outspread for about five to 10 minutes. Depending on the weather or the location, I can provide three guesses as to why the bird was engaging in that behavior. First, if it was a fairly hot sunny day, then it was possibly suffering from heat prostation and spreading out its wings to dissipate body heat. But more likely in that kind of weather, the robin was spreading its flight feathers to use the sun's rays to kill off microbial bacteria and other ectoparasites. Swallows often do this on a metal roof on a hot sunny day. On the other hand, if it was not particularly sunny or hot, when you saw the bird, it could have been performing a ritual called anting. The term generally refers to the behavior of birds when they either hold an ant in their bill and deliberately rub it over their wings and tail, or they actually crouch on a place frequented by ants and allow the little critters to crawl freely through their feathers. And why would they do such a thing? Well, over 200 different kinds of birds, mostly songbirds, do this, but it's not been studied in any great detail. Certain kinds of ants do not sting, but instead produce chemical secretions such as formic acid to repel attackers. There are three possible reasons for anting. Since anting is mostly seen in late summer or early fall when birds grow in new feathers, some scientists claim that it somehow provides a soothing action for irritated skin. Still others believe that the birds are encouraging the ants to expel their formic acid so that they become edible. And finally, there are those who believe that the ants' formic acid repels ectoparasites like lice and mites under the feathers. Regardless of the weather, we can be sure that the robin was engaging in some sort of comfort behavior. Inflation has hit the bird world, and I'm not talking about their air sacs. Soaring inflation and the rising cost of living everywhere in North America is forcing many folks to tighten their purse strings, possibly including those who feed the birds. Hopefully bird seeds not being removed from their budgets entirely, but here's a cautionary tale about resorting to purchasing cheaper bird food. And it's coming from the beaks of penguins in a Japanese zoo. At the Hakkonen Aquarium just south of Tokyo, zookeepers are offering cheaper food to their 20 captive penguins to help cut costs. Instead of being given their usual fare, tasty and fatty Japanese horse mackerel, the birds are being given saba, another type of mackerel that's slimier, but more important, less expensive, since this past May. And the penguins aren't buying it. While some of them take exploratory pecks at the replacement menu item, those who do take a bite just spit it out. Many of them are simply turning their beaks up at the cheaper food and are just refusing to eat. You see, inflation has hit Japan hard too, and the costs of running the aquarium are up by 20%. It's not known whether the penguins don't like the taste, the smell, or the texture of the cheaper mackerel, or do they just know they're getting a raw deal. 
But to be fair to the zookeepers, they do give the birds who refuse to eat the replacement fish what they used to eat. The message for those of you feeding the birds in your backyard? In your efforts to fight inflation, don't try to cheap out and buy less expensive and likely poorer quality bird food. You might end up attracting less desirable birds, or worse, turning off your feathered backyard friends, forcing them to go to other restaurants down the street. And it might be hard to entice them back. There are six species of quail here in North America. California, Gambles, Mountain, Montezuma, Scaled, and the Northern Bobwhites. They were called quail long time ago because they resembled Old World quails, but they're only distantly related. Uh, the Old World quails are actually pheasants, and here in North America, our quails form their own family. Since five species of New World quails are found mostly on the West Coast or in the Southwest, it was actually not that surprising that my first encounter with a quail, a gamble quail, was when I went birding in Nevada in 2016. Their behavior and their appearance were so different to anything that I had ever seen that I was absolutely mesmerized. So every time we go back to Vegas to a trade show, I drag my colleagues out to go bird watching with me looking for Gamble's quails. I also noticed in Las Vegas people buy quail seed blocks that they just plop on the ground and that attracts Gamble's quails to their backyard. Here on the East Coast we only have the northern bobwhites and their population is unfortunately declining because for years these birds have been hunted either for food or for sport. But if you haven't seen a northern bobwhite anywhere in your area, you might recognize their song. I don't think any of you will have a hard time distinguishing North American quails from other birds. These quails have all kind of similar body shape and sort of hooked beaks. Mountain and scale quails, both sexes look similar, whereas California gambles, Montezuma and Northern bobwhites, males have really beautiful face markings and females don't. New World quails eat mostly seeds, fruits, tubers, and leaves. Some insects are consumed, but that's mostly during their breeding season or when rearing their chicks. Their breeding season on average starts in March. Most quails are monogamous, and most species of quails, both males and females, build a nest on the ground out of grass and leaves. Montezuma quails actually build a dome out of grass and leaves with an entrance on the side. Depending on where they are geographically, quails can have anywhere between 3 to 20 eggs. The further north you travel, the more eggs they lay. Both parents help brood the chicks and both parents teach their chicks how to find food, guarding them while they're away from the nest. What a funny contest we've had. Some birds had such hilarious expressions. Let's check out the top five. Here's the third place. The second place. And the grand prize winner, congratulations everybody, September is Mockingbirds and Thrashers. Well, that's it, that's all for now. Let me know if you have any birds that are still nesting in your area. I am always curious to find out what birds are up to in different geographical areas. Take care everyone, I'll catch you in two weeks.